Hi, it's time for another math easy solution here to discuss another application of derivatives and now look at electric current and just show that it basically can be defined as a derivative. Basically, before I get to electric current, I just want to go over an electric charge, usually uh, written as Q, is the quantity of unbalanced electricity, either positive or negative, depending on whether there is an excess uh, or deficiency of electrons compared to the uh, protons. Basically, it causes a force to occur when it's close to other electrically, electrically charged matter. And just uh, some few points. Uh, same sign charges repel, but opposite charges attract. For example, a uh, plus and a plus. These guys, uh, they both, there's a repelling force, so it's going opposite. So if this is a proton, a proton it would go opposite. And then negative plus, it would go to, these would go together. And negative negative would basically uh, repel as well. Well, so uh, so the opposite attract, and basically uh, yeah the the same signs they repel. And the SI or international system of units, or which is also metric unit, is the coulomb or written as C. I'm not gonna go over too much on on how it's defined right now. Do that in, in, I'll do that in another video. And then uh, the and basically an electric current, which is. Um, which is what I'm going to go over right now, is basically a flow of electric charge. So it's, it's basically, it's actually the rate at this charge is moving across, and the SI unit is the ampere or A, I'm not going to go over the definition of that. I'll do that in another video as well. And basically, uh, an electric current exists whenever electric charges move as shown in this figure. So if you have a, a rod like this, so let's just say this is a rod, a metal rod, so if you have a metal rod like this, and these, these ones are electrons, and let's say you have some sort of positive charge on this side, uh, either through a voltage difference across, etc., then basically these, these electrons are moving this way. So if you have neg these are all negative ch uh, charges, the electrons are all negative. So as you can see, if they're all moving towards this, this point right here, the electric current is basically uh, is defined as yeah, this flow of electric charge is basically the rate that it's moving. Yeah, so I'll put negatives in all these. And to help uh, illustrate this uh, electric charge, for example, let's say we had a surface uh, right over, let's just say at this point right here. So we draw a surface right here, and, and we want to know, basically, let's call this, at this point right here, this is at time is equal to 1, or at T1. So at T1, we have uh, this charge, or this Q, we could just say that, Q is equal to well negative two. It just this is just oversimplified. I'm just just to show the idea of electric charge moving. So at this surface here, as you can see, there's two of them. So that's a Q is uh, or a Q one is two. And then let's say after one second, so we go at T two or after whatever whatever T two is, we get. So yeah, if we have let's say after one second or whatever time or whatever it is at T two, so we get something like this. And then as you can see, I'm just moving to the right. So let's say after a second, you get this point right here. So this is basically at T two. So as you can see at T two, we have now a Q two of there's there's about four across this surface as you see the electrons move this this might be from either increased voltage or or what now there's just an increase of electrons sent through it so now we get an increase of here but in terms a negative increase negative four right here so the current if we if you look at actually first the average current the uh, the current's written as i this is for current but if we go average current this just equals two delta Q because remember it's the flow of electrons. It's actually it's it's a rate per time, and then uh, over delta T right here. So the rate of of a uh, charge, uh, basically electric charge versus or divided by time right here. And so this would just equal to Q two minus Q one, all divided by well T two divided by T one. So this is just an average value like this. And then, as you then uh, as I showed before, this is just a rate of change. And with rates of change, uh, remember uh, if you look at my earlier video on derivative as a rate of change, as we basically uh, make this delta t approach zero, we get the exact uh, basically the exact current i at basically t uh, at t one, yeah, or any any time t or t one, and this would just equal to limit of uh, basically as 
delta t goes to zero of i average or uh, then if we just write this down limit delta t goes to zero of delta q over yeah over delta t right here so basically the current is just the derivative of the charge right here so this is all i kind of wanted to get get through is that derivative you, you could uh, use it as an application of basically electric current and this just equals to limit actually now limit this is just equal to now dq over dt so this is the same thing as the limit so this part right here dq over dt is just a derivative and so i is just a derivative of the electric charge uh, over uh, time and uh, yeah so that's uh, that's basically the application i wanted to show yeah, but uh, the cur electric current's not the only uh, rate of change that could be described as a derivative. Other ones in physics uh, that can be defined as derivative are basically velocity. I've done that earlier. Density, I went over linear density in my earlier videos. You can see these in the video links below. I haven't gone over these ones though, but power or the rate at which work is done could also be uh, written as a derivative. The rate of heat flow, so basically any rates, temperature gradient, this is just the rate of change of temperature with respect to position. Of if you have a, if you have a metal rod again it might be hotter at different places and then the rate of the change can be written written as derivative and also the rate of decay of a radioactive uh, substance in nuclear physics so th this is these are just a few of the derivatives applications you'll see these you'll see derivatives a lot in basically any engineering field any physics math field you'll you'll ever get into well anyways that's all for today if you learned from this video and uh, remember uh, you can also download these exact notes in the dropbox link below and stay tuned for another math easy solution